Welcome to this screencast about the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So what is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol? Well, it's the foundation of the World Wide Web. It's a way of making requests and responses to get resources from the World Wide Web. So it uses a request response protocol that is stateless, sort of, because if you can make the requests um, they're supposed to be stateless, but if you make a request and supply some information for like a cookie or your password or your session ID or stuff, the server can actually respond with a response that is considered stateful, but each request response is supposed to be stateless in itself. And so the protocol uses a client-server model where the client makes a request, the server responds with a res uh, processes the request and returns a response to the client. Now the server doesn't have to just respond to the client, it could then turn around and based upon the request make other requests for other, from other servers so that server can become a client to other servers and eventually compose the response back to the original client. So it's a very flexible protocol for sending messages or requests and responses that have built basically the World Wide Web. It's all founded on the World Wide Web. So what are the things that we are requesting? Well, we have a universal resource locator or a URL. It's basically a web address that indicates a resource. So it's just a string that identifies a particular resource out on the World Wide Web. What is its structure? The first part of a URL is the protocol or the uh, way you are talking or communicating across the World Wide Web to the server. So what protocol are you using when you're communicating from the client to the server across the web? The famous colon slash slash to indicate that we're done with the protocol portion of the URL and now we're moving on to the host name or IP address of the server where the resource resides or is available to be looked at or gotten from. Again, the, the host name or IP address does not mean that the server actually needs to have the entire resource, but that's what the location of where we think the resource is. The a colon and a port number, again, is, this is optional. You don't have to have a colon and a port number. It will default to the normal port for your protocol for HTTP, the default port is 80, but if you add the port number, you're telling the system that you can go con contact that host at a different port, and that's where you're gonna get your resource. Uh, the full path to the resource, so slash, blah, 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 slash, so that is the actual designation of the resource, where the resource lives on that host. And then an optional query string, which allows you to provide additional information in your URL to supply information for the server to um, deal with the resource or finding the resource. So an example would be HTTP is our protocol. We got a colon slash slash. Localhost is our host name or IP address. We're using the port number. We're using 8921 as our port that we would communicate on. And then the resource is located at slash account login, and the query string is providing some additional information about the user is identified as Cam. So what is an HTTP request? Well, it's just, again, it's a string, very simple string. It has a method, what, how, uh, an HTTP request method, a space, the URL to the resource that we're requesting, space, and then the HTTP version that we are talking on, and that is our, re our requested version that we're understanding. And then we have an optional message body in our request. So for example, we could say get HTTP localhost index.html, that's the URL that we're getting, that's a resource that we would like to get, and we are talking in HTTP 1.0. Or we could say put HTTP localhost user 3, we're still talking HTTP 1.0, but our body is now the information that we're requesting the server use. So we provide the message body 
of the JSON string name cam roll professor. So there are many different methods in HTTP. The five most common are get, which is requesting representation of the resource. So you say, I want this resource. And if the server responds successfully, you will get a representation of the resource. You don't actually get the, the resource, you get a representation. The server could respond in JSON, it could respond in XML, it could respond in HTML. There are all several different kinds of representations that the server could respond to you for that particular um, resource. And you might be able to supply, again, depending on the resource, you might say in the query string, I want JSON, or I want XML, or I want HTML. Next one is head. The head method is the same as get, but the server does not return the response body. And we'll talk a little bit about the response body, but that's a way of saying, is this, sir, is this resource there? Is, does it exist? Do I have access to it? You can do a head request instead of a get request to see whether or not the thing is there without having to have the server send back the entire uh, resource back to you. Next one is a post. Um, it's requesting that the server accept the message body as a subordinate to the resource. So it's like an update to the resource on the server. So you might say, oh, change the name to Carlton from Cam or something like that in the message body would it include the parts that you're trying to update that resource on the server. Um, and then the next one is a put. So you're requesting that the server store the entity, the message body is an entity as the resource. This is how you might add a new item to uh, web, uh, you know, creating a new account or, or adding a new uh, score or something to your game or your web application, you would probably do a put request. And then the last of the five common request methods is delete, and you're requesting that the server delete the specified resource, remove it from the server. There are many other methods for HTTP. These are just the five most common that we'll probably be using the most of. So what is an HTTP response? When the server gets this request, it processes the request, and then it sends back a string. The string has the HTTP version of that the server is responding in. Often it's the same as the HTTP version of the request. It doesn't have to be. Then a status code, a space and then the status code, which is a number saying indicates what happened with, with the request and then space and then a reason phrase that is a human readable sort of reason that explains the status code and then there's an optional response body so for example this might be a response to a get saying http version one response code is 200 200 is okay meaning success and then the we're returning the JSON object that was requested. So you can say that's the response body. But the response body is optional. If you get a HTTP 401 not authorized, that indicates that for whatever reason, your request is denied because you're not authorized access to that um, resource. So you, don't, you didn't have the security credentials to access the resource. So there are several different status codes. They're broken down into five different groups. The first group is the 100s. They are informational status codes. It's sort of saying, this is information about the item, not used very often. I've never, to my knowledge, seen an informational response, um, but they, it is in the HTTP protocol. 200s means success, that means Whatever the request was, the server was able to process it, and the response means that you succeeded, your request has been successfully responded to. If it's a get, the response body will hold the representation of the resource you're asking for. If it's a put, you successfully added that item to the server. If it's a post, you've updated that resource. If it's a delete, the resource has been deleted. Um, redirection is basically the server telling the client 
that that resource does not live at that location anymore. It is in a different location and it will respond with the new URL that the client should now update its list of resources to say, if I want that resource, I need to use this new location. It's a way of informing the client that if a resource may have moved or is no longer in the same location. Uh, 400 is a client error. Um, client errors are things like you're not authorized, um, the resource that you asked for doesn't exist, a 404, you asked for something that isn't there. Um, the path to the resource just leads nowhere. Um, there are several others, uh, 403, um, bad request. Um, so there's a bunch of client errors. The problem the server is saying is that your request, the client's request was bad in some way. The 500, um, status codes is saying that there was a server error. The server was unable to complete the request. Maybe it had a bug, maybe it had a, a, a problem with a database access, database is not available, uh, something is not available. The server was unable to respond to a valid request, but there was a problem on the server side. So the, the resource might exist, but there was a problem with the server serving up the resource or the representation of the resource. So that's you might return the 500 if there was a server error. There was a problem with the server handling the request. And those are the HTTP responses, and that is the whole idea between the HTTP or a very brief overview of the HTTP protocol. We make requests, the server handles the response, it builds a response string, and sends it back to the client. Thank you for your attention.